Cool. Hi, hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event. Um, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, we do this, and we cover Library Commission activities, anything that may be of interest to librarians in the state. A um, mixture of our staff, guest presenters, uh, little mini tours, question and answer sessions, whatever we can come up with. Uh, this morning we have Michael Sowers back with us. He was here three weeks ago. Yep. <laughs> Doing a little introduction to Twitter session. And now we've got some more um, advanced type stuff, other things you can do with Twitter um, that he'll be going through with us this morning. So take it. Take, take it, it away. away. All right. Yes. <laughs> um, so last time was all about Twitter, which is considering we're doing a second now more about Twitter. I guess we didn't cover everything about Twitter last time. Uh, basically, the idea here is um, if you did see the first session, uh, there will be a little bit of overlap. I want to back up and cover a couple things real quick just to make sure kind of everybody's on the same level. Um, and then we'll kind of move on. And kind of the basic assumption is you've got the grasp of Twitter. Um, you're hopefully using Twitter already. But what other services and what other things can you do to make uh, kind of maybe automate some things with Twitter, figure out who to follow, who maybe not to follow, that sort of thing. Um, and I have a very specific list of, of sites and services I want to cover. And if we get through them in less than an hour, we get through them and I can entertain questions. Or, uh, but it, it definitely won't take us uh, more than the hour. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and switch on over to uh, our browser. I am using Firefox here. And uh, just giving you a quick show here of a standard Twitter page with a background on it. Uh, we'll, we'll, one of the services I'll be talking about does involve backgrounds. Um, you know, the quick overview, I can type in what I'm doing here. It shows the recent posts of the people I follow below that. Um, over on the right-hand side, it has my username, number of people I'm following, number of people who are following me, number of tweets that I've posted. Um, I can do searching, I can send direct messages, um, I can mark favorites. These are all things that I discussed in the last presentation. So if you want to go back and view that recording, uh, you are able to do that if you didn't attend that one already. Now, this is generally not how I use Twitter. I'm, I'm generally not here on this screen. It is, it is a bit limiting, and especially when you're following over 400 people, it can be a little difficult to keep track of everything that's going on. So um, there are other interfaces you can use with Twitter. Um, I, I have been known to use Twitter on my cell phone, either via text message or through an application called Tiny Twitter that I just discovered about a week ago. Um, if you have an iPhone, there are iPhone applications for that. You can interface with Twitter, um, uh, as I mentioned, via text message. There's also, if you're more of a desktop-oriented person, there are uh, packages you can download, such as uh, Twirl would be one of them, and um, um, TweetDeck, which, which is a very popular one, which Krista uses uh, at so the fun. moment. Yes. Um, I use one that's a little similar to TweetDeck uh, called TwitHive, and this is something I also covered in the last presentation, but I want to just take a few minutes to kind of look at it again here. Um, the reason I'm liking TwitHive at this point is that it is web-based. So as long as I am at a computer with web access, I can get to this and it, I don't have to transfer any settings between computers. It, it's all remote access. So if I'm at home, if I'm on a laptop, if I'm at my desk at work, or I'm at this computer in our uh, presentation room here at, um, at the commission, I can log into my account. Um, you log into TwitHive just with your Twitter login. Uh, uses uh, that to authenticate you. And the benefit to uh, something like a tweet deck or this is that you can now start sorting all of those people you follow into different categories. And you can have each column is kind of a subsection of all of the tweets that I receive and all of the people organizations I follow. So I have this first column here labeled favorites. These are kind of the, the people that I, I know personally. I, I really want to keep track of them. They're also not local in this case. So I'm not sure favorites is quite the right term, but that, that's how I started with it. Um, my next column here I ha is labeled at M. Sowers. These are all the mentions of me or replies that I get to things that I've mentioned. So I had uh, been mentioning some uh, 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 health issues in the family going on. So people have been responding to that this morning. I might post an article to Twitter that I've read and people might retweet it. 
Um, so they'll give me credit, and I'll see that you know what what I'm saying is being passed along. That's a it's it's kind of, of an ego search, but uh, Twitter is kind of a conversation too. So that's that. that. Um, the next category I've labeled organizations and famous people. So these are um, you know uh, uh, I follow bookstores and publishers and um, uh, software publishers, and uh, here's Amazon deals uh, here from uh, Ukong deals. Uh, Clumsy lovers is a band. Uh, you know, I don't really know these people per se, but I, I want to follow them, hear what they're saying, and, and go along with that. And then I can keep more columns going as I kind of scroll over to the right here. Then I have my um, Nebraska column. So uh, this uh, first one is from uh, somebody over in uh, Economic Development, uh, 1011 News, uh, Lincoln City Libraries, Nebraska Tourism. So, you know, kind of got that uh, Krista, my coworkers, friends here in Nebraska. I, I kind of put them in the Nebraska category. Um, my next category is uh, my best friend in Arizona, so I just follow her and what people are saying about her and the conversations that are going on there. Uh, I then have a, a direct messages category, so if people have sent me something very uh, specifically to me, probably which I shouldn't be showing out in the <laughs> general public. Um, I then have a, a one here called Public Library, which is a search that I've done, so I can set up a column. So anytime somebody mentions Public Library on Twitter, I get a copy. Needless to say, this is way off to the right-hand side. Notice I, I, I don't check this very often. And then I have this final category, which is all 446 people I'm following. Every single tweet that they do come right into this category. And that's all the way over to the right, which I check even the least. Because there's some folks, you know, they follow me. They say some interesting things. Um, I, but I don't really know them. I'm not sure. I, I, I'll follow them back. Notice I don't follow everybody back. That would be insane. Um, and so, you know, I'll keep an eye on that. And if somebody starts to get really interesting, I might move them over to my favorites. Or if I discover they're in Nebraska, I might move them into my Nebraska category, something like that. Um, and so from here, I can also post tweets. So I would just click New Update and uh, giving another Twitter talk. Say hi. And I can send that off. I can send direct messages to particular people here. Um, I can create a new channel. That's, that's one of the columns that you see here on the screen. I can perform a search. I can turn refreshing on and off. This is something we're going to talk about with another service where, you know, um, I really like for the next hour, I don't need Twitter bothering me. I, I, I can just say stop checking for new tweets. Uh, I'll turn that back on later. To categorize or to manipulate any one of these categories, let's say I wanted to add somebody to favorites, I would just click on favorites. It will give me a list here in a moment of everybody I'm following and then I can add them to a particular group and in fact I will do that real quick here because I've got orgs and famous people and I forgot that I started following the TV show Fringe oh okay so I've already added that to this category uh, I can then remove it from the category if I want um, and just the other day I got I got the the associate dean of admissions at UNL started following me so I thought I'd follow him back but it just, Is that what real that's what Neural Nebraska is. I don't know why he picked that username, but he has a bio. Stressed. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I'm going to throw this out here again. I mentioned this in the last presentation. If you start tweeting, before you write your first post, write yourself a bio. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times people will follow me, and I'm going to decide whether to follow you back based on your bio. And if the bio is blank, and we don't have a clue who you are because of that. Yeah, and your username is, is Joe Schmo 682 <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not going to follow you back. So, you know, make sure you, you write yourself a, a good bio. Now, the bios can only be 160 characters long, okay. so be specific. But, you know, say where you are, say what you do. It, There's it's also really an important. option to put a URL in there as well. So if you have a personal website or your work website, if, you're, if you are tweeting as a library or something, put that in there. Put the mm -hmm. library's website in there, and then we know, oh, this is the tweet, the Twitter account for so-and-so library. Such and such library, right, exactly. Now, keep in mind, in most of the examples I'm giving here, I'm, I'm giving these examples as an individual. Um, if you are tweeting on behalf of an organization, then the rules might be a little different. We'll, we'll try to throw those in as we're going along, but I am using my own personal account as the example here. Okay, so the next site I want to show you, um, this is fun. I, I'm sure Krista can agree with this that, you know, sometimes Twitter goes down. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, in fact, don't Twitter, panic. yeah, don't panic, okay. Um, and, in fact, yesterday Gmail went down, 
And Twitter almost came down because everybody on Twitter was talking about how Gmail was down. I mean, it was, it was completely nuts. Um, so, but you might be wondering, you know, is, is, is it you? Is it, you know, your access to Twitter is down or is Twitter down completely? So there's a great site called istwitterdown.com. And if you go to istwitterdown.com, it will tell you yes or no. And just, just to be sure, I will refresh and it will still say no. So that means Twitter is not down. Twitter is working. If you are having a problem with Twitter, then um, it's at your you end. It's, you, it's not, not Twitter. So now if it says yes, that means don't panic. Twitter will be back. Still yeah. working on it. Um, so, yeah, they're working on it. Okay, so that's just kind of a fun one there. Um, now, let's say you're surfing around and you find an interesting site. Like, let's say I find istwitterdown.com is interesting, and I want to tell all of my, my Twitter friends about istwitterdown.com. Well, kind of in your standard mode, what you would have to do is something like copy the URL. So we're going to copy that, and I'd have to go back here and write, just found a great site. I don't know, uh, and paste in the URL there, and I would click update. Well, okay, not difficult, but not exactly the most convenient either. Well, one of the things I've done is, um, because I'm using Firefox, I've added what's called Twitter Bar. And this is also something I, I briefly mentioned in the last presentation. And if you look at my address bar all the way to the right, um, and it's just to the left of the Google search box, I don't think you're seeing my mouse pointer there, you'll see a little T for Twitter. Okay. What this will allow you to do is actually write a Twitter post in your address bar. So I get to here and I find is Twitter down. I'm like, okay, that's great. So I'm going to uh, just type here is Twitter down. Find out at and there's the URL. Now if I was to press enter, it actually try to go to that address, but that isn't an address. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to click over here and it tells me I have 95 characters left for my post and it turns into a little plus sign. I'm going to go ahead and click that and say posting to Twitter and then I'll say post successful and it will take me back to the standard URL. If I now go back to Twitter and I bring up the list of things I have posted, there it is. It's already shortened the URL for me which is one uh, service Twitter provides and it has my text. So I'm almost a lot of posts that I put up, a lot of things I tweet are web pages that I found online. So literally, I will be surfing around, I'll find it, I'll type a couple of words at the beginning of the URL, and I'll use uh, Twitter bar, and I'll just send it off. And then, you know, I don't have to get, start switching back and forth between things. It really makes posting to Twitter for me almost transparent. Mm -hmm. huh? um, Comment? For a library, this would be a very good way to share um, we're having story time. Go here for the you know the schedule. Boom, and when you're on your story time page, or um, new classes are available, or we've got new books in the library, and here's where you can find a link to them, a link to our catalog. Um, you could use that for the same thing. Just be on the page that you want to share and start writing your little uh, tweet up there mm -hmm. in the top. Exactly, um, and that way too, you can't accidentally post the wrong URL. No, you know, sure. if you're on the URL for that page and you're looking at it, you're you're pretty much at the right URL. Okay, so now the next thing is Google Reader. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and back up here a second. Um, I've started using Google Reader in the last month for, as my feed reader. I subscribe to lots of RSS feeds. I don't want to turn this into an RSS workshop, um, but we're going to mention it a little bit. And so let's say I come in here and uh, I pull up my 2.0 stuff and um, I see, oh, okay, here's an interesting article about identifying a website sentiment with context sense. And I, I kind of read through this article and I think, well, you know, this, this is something I want to share. Well, now, you know, I've got a couple of options so far. Um, I can actually click on this and it will load up that web page. And then I could use uh, Twitter bar to kind of paste the URL and the title in and, and things like that. But um, what I can actually do because I'm using Google Reader, if I scroll down to the bottom of the article, you'll see you've got some options here. And for those of you that, that are familiar with Google Reader, you, you might be, you know, like, you want to like it, you want to share it with other people, things like that. But there's this wonderful little send to option down in the, the bottom right of every article you read in Google Reader. And if I click on this, I'm going to get a bunch of choices, and you'll notice one of those choices is Twitter. Now, you have to turn this on first. 
All right. So let me show you what it does, and then I'll show you how to turn it on. I'm going to say, well, this is the article I want to tweet about. So, okay, I just click on send to and then Twitter. And um, it's going to try to open a pop-up, so I need to tell this browser that it's allowed to do so. I will try that again. And it will open up a new tab for me. And notice it takes me to my Twitter account. If I wasn't logged in already, it would ask me to. And it has copied the title of that article right there. And it's already given me a shortened URL for it right there. I can type in whatever else I want. I click update, and off my tweet goes. So I can literally post to Twitter right from within Google Reader um, instead of having to load up a separate page and then even use something maybe like TweetBar. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you turn that on? Assuming you have a Google, Google Reader account, you go into Google Reader settings, which is up here in the upper right, and we wait for that to load. And we wait for it to load more. There we go. And then under settings for Google Reader, all the way to the right here up at the top is send to. We click on send to. And then Firefox says not responding. What? Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. I've got all this stuff preloaded. Let's see if we can get it to crash. <laughs> awesome. Well, what I'll try to talk about while we're waiting for, for Firefox to continue to work um, is on the send to screen it will give you a list of pre-configured options which you turn on and off via checkbox and one of those options is Twitter so you just check Twitter you want it you want that available under send to and it will work for you uh, at this point uh, there are also ways you can add your own and add some more and write some custom code and things like that Twitter is and give me one sec here, folks. <laughs> we will run it again, and hopefully, there's my outline. If you're See, uh, interested, <laughs> uh, and hopefully, all of these tabs will reload. Yes, they will. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to close the ones that uh, we have already used, so as to maybe simplify the. Uh, overkill of this. Okay, so we're back where we were. Okay. So, uh, okay, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> Just do the hell of it. Yeah. Um, we'll see if we can bring up settings and send to. Uh, there we go. See, now it works. And if you look at that list, I have a blogger account, so I've turned on blogger. I have a delicious account, so I've turned on delicious. I have a dig account. You can send to Facebook, friend feed, all sorts of these. But one of them, as you can see down at the bottom of the list, is Twitter. And there goes Firefox crashing again. It doesn't like Google Reader. Uh, there is probably at least one person on this uh, 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 listening to me right now who has <laughs> got a big smile on their face. And I won't say who that is. Um, so let's try that one more time. And let's not actually go there again. And in, in Firefox's defense, I use it every day, all the time, and go to that screen quite regularly, and it's never crashed on me before. This is, well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> okay, let's, let's restore those outfits. Yes, I'm going to close Google Reader. Exactly. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we can do that. Um, haven't seen any questions come through. Oh, wait a minute. We, uh, Susie says she's here, and someone says it's okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> appreciate that, Laura. Uh, Do you have uh, any questions about any of the stuff we've shown already? All right. Let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna we're gonna take it kind of up a notch here in the technology, um, and. This is kind of another way to post. And this um, can work in several situations. It uses a service called Twitter Feed. And, and by the way, almost all these services I'm talking about today, there's like a dozen services that do each of the things I'm talking about. I'm just showing you the ones I use. I'm not necessarily saying they're the best. It's just they're the ones I'm most familiar with and, and I'm most comfortable with. Um, for example, I write a blog. 
Uh, and so uh, whenever I write a blog post, I want a tweet to show up in my Twitter account saying, hey, I've, run a blog, I've written a blog post. Here's the title, and here is a link to it. Um, here at the commission, we have a, a commission Twitter account called NLC News. And whenever we post an announcement or whenever we post a, a blog post, theoretically, whenever we posted a photo to Flickr or we put up a recording on Blip TV, we can set all this up so that whenever we do it in one place, it automatically shows up on Twitter. And this is done via RSS. Okay. So let me set up a, a quick example here. I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account. And this is where, you know, hope Michael remembers his password. <laughs> in and we don't okay I'm actually gonna try something a little different here using something called open ID which might be the way I I created this login originally so give me one second here Yeah, I know, and I'm pretty sure it was this one. Um, see, and of course, I have completely forgotten my password. I'm going to one last try. Yeah. Yay, there we go. See, if you get a method for picking your passwords, you can usually guess it eventually. <laughs> By, and there you go. Okay, so it, this should be sending us back to uh, Twitter feed. It says waiting for it, so um, but we're not actually. Oh, there it goes. Okay, uh, so what's going on here is that I have set a few things up, and this this is my account sending off to um, uh, uh, from different services to Twitter. So what I've done here is, um, you'll notice I have here Travel Librarian, Last FM, my Facebook status, Dig, ITAR. There's, there's several ones I've set up here, but we'll just keep it nice and simple with travelandlibrarian.info. That's my blog. So what I have done is I have gone into my Twitter feed account. I have told it my login and password for tw my Twitter account. And then I've given it the URL of the RSS feed for my blog. And what it will do is it says here, updating every half hour. Every half hour, it will check to see if there's any new content on my blog coming from the RSS feed. And if it finds anything, it will then create a tweet of the title and the URL of that blog post and send it to my Twitter account. Right, so it's kind of automated. So it's taking other sources and sending it through to Twitter so that people who follow me on Twitter know I wrote a new blog post. Um, this is also how I've set up my Facebook status. So if for some reason, I'm not a big Facebook user, uh, for some reason I write a status update on Facebook, it also shows up as a tweet. Okay. Um, if I favorite a piece of music on Last FM, it um, sends it out as a tweet. Okay. If I do something on Dig, it sends it out on a tweet. Okay. So you can kind of automate this process. So if your library has a blog, you can literally set up a Twitter account that just tweets every time you write a new blog post. You don't necessarily have to write new content for Twitter. Now, mm -hmm. recommend it. More content is better. And especially if you only write a new blog post once a week, people are probably going to want more than once a week tweets. But it is possible to do. Okay. And all, literally all you need to do is you click on create a new feed. And you've already set up your Twitter access. And you say create a new feed to Twitter. You can also send it to a couple other services. What is the name of the feed? What is the RSS uh, address of the feed? And then the advanced settings are things like how often do you want it to check for new content? Very simple to do. So as long as you've got RSS, you can send it on off. Any questions on that one? That one is a little uh, more uh, complex, I would say, uh, but basically, take RSS and off it goes. No, cool. Uh, and your library has a Facebook page. So Laura, yes. you could use Twitter feed. You're going to have to find the RSS feed of your Facebook status and you can feed that back through the Twitter 
And basically, you're just duplicating everything. Um, but, you know, it, it'll get you started. Yeah, it's good. For some people who are wondering, I've got this Twitter account now. What am I going to do with it? Or, oh, God, we've got to have somebody in charge of putting things out all the time. Well, you don't necessarily. If you have things like you're already doing a blog, um, doing other things that do have RSS, just get them set up with Twitter feed, and you're already sending content that's your library related out to your Twitter feed. So you've already got stuff <coughs> going out to it um, automatic, right? You know, automatically mm -hmm. there. It's yeah. a good start. Yeah. Now I don't specifically remember how to find the RSS feed of your Facebook status, but I know it's doable because I've done it. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. Um, okay. So let's try uh, the next service. Um, I was mentioning a little earlier about the uh, maybe you're getting a little too much. This is for when you're following people. Um, and let's say you've got that one or two followers that are posting something every 10 minutes. <laughs> and, you know, you don't want to unfollow them because, you know, you really do find them pretty good. Um, but, uh, you know, really, you, you, you got to get some work done for the next two hours or day. You know, just, just you know, this person's driving you a little nuts. People at events. Okay. Or, yeah, if, if so and so is at a conference that you have absolutely no interest in, that's a great example. I yeah. love that. You can just, you know, everything for the next five days while they're on their trip, just mm -hmm. I don't want to hear about it. If they well, Twitter tweeting about every every session they went to, all the people they met, but if it's not something you're interested in, you can yeah. send me something. Or someone is at an event that you're not interested in, like someone's going to a concert for a band that you don't care about. Sure. And they're yeah. just talking all about, oh, yeah, this song, they did that song, oh, my God, they're, you know, and you're like, okay. <laughs> right. You know, uh, Krista might snooze me while I'm on my honeymoon for the next two weeks. I yeah. mean, you know, that, that's, you know, <laughs> not that I plan on tweeting much from, anyways, uh, <laughs> too much information. So, basically, uh, you go to twittersnooze.com, uh, you fill in your Twitter username and password, you put in the username of the person you want to uh, snooze uh, for how long. How many days? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 15, or 30. You can turn them off for a month. Um, you can announce snooze on Twitter. Now, I, I don't believe, I, I, and I haven't used this service in a while, I don't believe it says, I'm snoozing Krista for the next month. I think it's just saying, hey, I'm using Twitter snooze. It, it's basically you're posting an advertisement for their service. Okay. Uh, and then you click snooze, and you don't see any of their posts for that number of days, um, but you haven't unfollowed them. Basically, this service just blocks them for you. And it's nice that it's automatic. You don't have to go back and unsnooze them. It just does it for the number of days you said, and then they're back. Exactly. So, all right. Next service. So now we're, we're kind of getting into the following people and, and uh, you know, who do you want to follow. Um, okay, then we have here Tweet Blocker. Now, there's a couple of services like this, and... Um, you know, I don't want to say that they're necessarily, um, you don't necessarily want to follow them 100%. I'll, I'll give you an example here, but let's go ahead. I'm going to log in here. I, I do have an account for TweetBlocker. Um, and basically what this is, is you're going to see this in a while. TweetBlocker is basically using something called, called OAuth. Don't worry about what it actually stands for. Um, but you will see it up in the address bar. You'll see O-A-U-A-T-H, OAuth. Um, it's allowing you to log in to this, give, the, give this service access to your Twitter account without actually giving them your Twitter username and password. Okay. It's you're, you're logging into Twitter and telling Twitter it's okay for this other service to have access to your account temporarily. Um, this is actually a really good way for a service. Some services you have to give them your username and password. This is the preferred method. You can you pretty much rest assured that nobody's going to get a hold of your username and password. If you do it this way. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, yep, please give them access. And what this service is going to do is it's going to look through all of the people I follow or are and or are following me. And uh, it's uh, loading them up here. I'm going to let that run in background because I haven't run it in a while so I've got a bunch of new followers it needs to check out I'm gonna let that run and it's going to grade them okay now I am by no means picking on anybody here I have no control over these ratings um, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna give them a score uh, on uh, kind of a, a one to a hundred and it's gonna look at several factors I'll get to in a moment and so let's say here that um, visit Mesa is following me 
and I'm going, well, you know, do I really want to follow them back or are they a spammer? Do, do I want them following me? Do I even want them associated with my account? Well, according to this, they're saying they get a perfect score of 100 and they get, they get an A-plus grade. So probably even if you don't want to follow them back, there's probably no problem with, you follow, with them following you. Um, now, again, I don't want to pick on anybody here. I, I know some of these people personally. Um, but let's see, here we have uh, the Banning Library only gets a 45. They have a, they're getting a D. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, I can click on Details here, and um, it's saying, well, they've been around for a long time, um, but they don't have a really balanced ratio between friends and followers, and they're not posting very often. They're not very active. I think this is an active okay. Oh, this is an active user. Okay, but they're getting the D here, I think, because does not have an account balance ratio of friends and followers. Mm -hmm. So in other words, maybe they've got a lot of followers, but they're not following anybody back. Okay, it's probably not that great. I, I wonder if I can find an F. Oh, here's some Fs. It does that when you reload. It's very oh, okay. It's, it, I got a, got a whole bunch of new ones here. So let's, let's pick uh, uh, kids and sleds. I have no idea who kids and sleds is. So we go to details. Okay. User has been around for a long time. This user does not have balance. The user doesn't seem to be active. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, I'm not saying this is it, it's it's a piece of information for you to decide. Mm -hmm. That's all. I even I haven't gone through and un, and and blocked everybody who's got an F because you know maybe they just started up. Um, maybe they're just you know. Uh, it just gives you a place to start if you are trying right. to weed through, if you get a lot and you're wondering who are all these people, it gives you something to start with. Then what you can do is go to their accounts and see, well, what do they, have they actually said? Or, oh, is mm -hmm. this my cousin and I really should just leave it alone? Right. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, well, okay, and here's an example of an F. If I actually hover over their account here, we'll see the username, the number of people following. And, and this is somebody who actually took a Twitter class of mine. And probably that's when they signed up. They signed up and they posted two whole tweets. Um, back on July 30th, and I haven't done anything since. Well, you know what? Testing I'll, it out because they were just learning about right. it. Right. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'll let them follow me. <laughs> because, you know, maybe they just want to read what I'm posting, and they don't want to participate any further. That's okay. They took a class of mine. I would consider it maybe rude if I blocked them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe next week they'll pick up. So, you know, you can do that. And you'll notice my grade here is an A+. Oh. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, you know, you take it for what it's worth. Um... Another thing you can do is let's say somebody has signed up and you're wondering when did you or that person sign up for Twitter? How long have they been around? Well, let's see here. I can type in my username and I joined on the 9th of March 2007. And then I can actually uh, tweet that uh, I, uh, I uh, joined Twitter 908 days ago. So I've just posted a little ad for their service too. <laughs> so that was, let me back up here, that was when did you join Twitter.com? So nice and simple. It's just a way to find out. Um, oh, when did, okay. So you're C Burns. Burns. Yeah. yeah, we'll click find out. And August seventh. Yep. Uh, yep. Oh. A little so, uh, several months later. What is that picture? Is that you? No. This is the wrong Burns. That's not me. Are you oh, C J Burns? Yeah. There we go. Yay. <laughs> Um, so just a month later, a month and a half, so six weeks. So, you know, there you go. So, again, you know, you just find out. It's another piece of information about who's following you and who you're following. Mm -hmm. Now, then you can get a little more interesting, and that is do two of your friends follow each other? So I can say, well, you know, I'm wondering, does Krista follow me? <laughs> you know, because if she doesn't, I might, I might have to be a little upset. So I'm going to go ahead and check this, and this is called doesfollow.com, and yep, yep, <laughs> she follows me, so that's good. Okay, and then, hey, you know, wonder if I, M. Sowers is following C.J. Burns, and we click on that, and yep, we also do that. <laughs> and again, we can Twitter this result and give them a little advertisement. So, you know, if you're wondering if somebody is following someone else, because sometimes these, the, the, the Twitter service itself, you start following hundreds of people, you get a thousand people following it's you. Hard to manipulate all that. Exactly. That information is in there, but it's really difficult. And it gives it to you like a page at a time. You know, this is just a you know, quick way to kind of check and find out. They have a great API. This is, this is why all these third-party services can work. Right. 
Then we have a service called Overlapper, okay? and we can find out what, you know, are, are these people kind of tweeting the same things? Mm. Are they retweeting each other? So let's check again. We'll use Chris as my guinea pig here. And let's see if we got any overlap between our, our two uh, accounts. And, you know, maybe some, yeah. Um, so we have a 178 shared followers. So 178 people both follow, follow both of us. Um, we follow 170 of the same people. Um, and so it's, it's actually, I, I take that back, it's not actually the content, it's the followers. So, you know, we follow a lot of the same people, and, and that's okay, too. Right. So, again, just, you know, interesting information you can pull out um, of this service. Okay. All right, got a couple more I want to talk about. Christine, question or comment? No. no? Okay. And uh, let's just check the questions here real quick. LOL. I probably have an F because I don't use my Twitter much. <laughs> yeah, you might, uh, Laura, but that's okay. Like I said, you know, an F is not necessarily a reason I'm going to unfollow you. You know, if I know you, yeah, I'll give you a little more. I'll, I'll cut you some slack. And you've written a good bio, and you've put up a picture of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's another key. Yes, exactly. Okay. Flicker my background. I have not played with this before, so we're going to actually try this live. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm getting a little tired of the background. It is currently unavailable. Oh, darn. Okay, well, you get the point. Um, you have a Flickr account. You, you find a photo that you like. Um, you use this service. You point it to the photo. You point it to your Flickr account, and then it becomes the background image on your Flickr home. Uh, excuse me, on your Twitter homepage. And it it's like it down. Can, it, tiles it tiles it. Yeah. yeah. You want to make sure it's a nice big picture to reduce tiling, um, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, see, I was going to do this live. I was going to go find a great photo and see what oh well. At Sawhorse is saying. Please this follow is something at Saw cool yes. too that you can do a lot of. In, um... uh, well, it's out of New York City, and they don't really say anything about this. Um, yeah, but this is something good to, to note um, as just. In general, you'll see lots of companies, organizations, or libraries, or whatever, saying, follow us on Twitter, or keep track of what we're doing here. Um, I noticed um, Twitter feed had one, too. Follow us, you know, people that create these apps or um, programs will have an account as well, and so that you can keep track of what's going on. Right. Um, Twitter status, just for in general, has an account. So it'll, you know, definitely jump over and see, you know, who created this, if you want to keep track of what else they're doing, or what they're doing with this, or if it's like the Twitter feed one, it was specifically... Um, for that application so you can keep up to date on any changes they make to it, enhancements, sure. updates, is it down, you know, that kind of thing. So there's some programs that they're apps that you're really into. Um, definitely do those. Follow them. Yep. Um, now the next one is this is um, Twitter stats. Yeah, now or tweet stats. And I'm going to go ahead and graph me here. Now hopefully this will work um, relatively quickly. Okay. And uh, it says this will take a while. So you know what we're going to do? Oh, this is 0%. Ooh, I've written like 9,000 tweets. This might take a minute. We'll come back to this one. Krista, make sure I come back to that. We'll let this run in the background, and, and hopefully it'll give us a, a basic idea. Okay, now here's the next thing. Um, back up my tweets. There's several services for this one. Um, I'm not going to go into too, too, too much detail here. But, um, you know, you put all this content up on Twitter, and there's two things you want to consider. One, Twitter will only actually show you won't actually show you everything you've ever posted. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's something like it will only show you 3,200 tweets, as it says right up here. Thank you. Somebody's actually reading the screen. Um, so I've, I've posted over 9,000. How do I, you know, I can't just keep going. Well, and first of all, who would want to do like 40 at a time, page by page, looking at the last 9,000 or even 3,200 tweets? Okay. Second of all, what if Twitter blew up tomorrow? <laughs> All of that content that you put on there, all of those links that you posted, all of that interesting stuff will be, would be gone. So what you can do is with back of my tweets, sign up for an account, give it access to your account, and it will actually download all of your tweets for you and periodically make backups. So the information is there. Twitter has all your tweets, but they don't let you see. Yes, all of them. Twitter. Twitter has all of your tweets. Um, 
but yeah. After so that. I'm using the free here. Uh, so I'm trying to log into my account, and that's going to allow that. Um, I've already done this. Okay, and this service will also, by the way, back up, back up pictures from Flickr and your blog and your mail, and you can pay for a service or whatever. I'm just talking about the back up my tweets and the free version of the account. That's that's kind of all we're doing here. And um, I already logged in. Oh, here we go. I hit the wrong login. I'm kind of guessing at my password again. <laughs> no. Yeah, I knew I should have logged this all in in advance, but I didn't. No, Keep, we're keeping it real. It. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it has um, actually backed up only 3,700 at the moment. Uh, we'll, uh, I, I think I need to run a backup again uh, pretty darn soon. Um, but then I can now download this file in, in HTML, JSON, or XML format. Really, I don't worry about the different formats, but XML will import nicely into Excel if you want to do, you know, pull, pull it into Excel. JSON, actually not 100% sure what that's used for. I've heard of it before. Or HTML, and you can basically download a web page with all of your tweets. So it's just a way to back up your content. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one I have to show you here is uh, something I literally discovered last week. So I have only played with this a little bit. It's called Social Oomph. And this is a service that you probably wouldn't use as an individual, but you would use as an organization. Okay, it does a lot of things here. And I'm going to log into this. I am 99.9% I am .9 sure I know my password because <laughs> I signed up for it on Monday. Yay. And this, does, this is another service that does a lot of things. It also can cost you money if you want to. I'm just looking at the free services, and I'm just looking at the things related to Twitter. Okay. And what you can do is several things. And one of the main things you can do is you can do what are called scheduled tweets. So you can say, okay, at, five, at, at, at 8 o'clock on Monday morning, this is the tweet I want to go out. So you can, you can write it in here, say, Monday morning, 5 a.m., Please post this to my Twitter account, and off it goes. So if you've got things where you know you want to make very specific announcements at certain times, you can schedule them in advance. And I think that can be a really useful service for, for some organizations. Okay. Um, if you know what the next month's worth of events are at your library, mm -hmm. sit down, write all those tweets, and have them all go out you know, 24 hours before the event instead of having to worry about, okay, what's going on tomorrow? What tweets do I need to write today? You know, sit down, write them all. Um, a few other things you can do here. And remember, I, this is really new, so I have to, I'm still learning where everything is. Tweets, DMs, followers. Okay. You can do vetting in here. So you can actually set this up so that if somebody follows you, this service actually kind of blocks them until you approve them, hmm. which I find very interesting. Um, although maybe as a public library, you wouldn't, you know, as a library, you wouldn't want to just accept everybody. But if you don't want to accept the spammers, you might want to, you know, approve everybody. It's like approving comments in a blog. Um, you can have this. I'm, I'm going to talk about a few of the other things because I, I, I don't remember where all the links are. Um, <clears throat> if somebody follows you. Or let, let's say somebody follows me, I have to decide whether I want to follow them back, and then I have to actually go to their page on Twitter and say, yes, I want to follow them back. You can use this service to automatically follow back anybody who follows you. Mm. And you can set it up so that when it automatically follows that person back, it posts a message to them saying, hey, thanks for following me. I mean, you can really kind of automate this process. If you, if you use Twitter a lot, you'll notice um, sometimes with the organizations, if you follow them, like within five minutes they followed you back, they might be using a service like this that does that. So, you know, they don't have somebody sitting there going, okay, I have a new follower, i got to follow them back and write them a message. Okay, I have a new follower, i got to follow them back and i got to write them a message. This can kind of automate that process. That's a really good marketing thing for you as a library that your users are seeing you respond to them automat right, you know, so quickly. You know, whether it's you, know, you doing it personally a lot or having a service do it, it shows them, we're paying attention, we know you're out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
Gives them a little warm fuzzy feeling. Yep. After. <laughs> so this this has got to be the like I said I, I I found out about this last week. I set it up on Monday and and I haven't really used it. I've just kind of played with it a little bit. Um, but it, it's got some definite possibilities if you're looking to schedule tweets, uh, uh, have to approve people following you, um, and or want to automatically pe follow people back, um, and or automatically send them a message thanking them for following you, uh, which, which can be a really handy thing to do. Now, you don't want to over-automate, however. You, know, you really want to keep it personal. You don't want just a, a robot following everybody back over and over again. Um, so, you know, it, it's got some possibilities in there and let's check the questions uh, no additional questions okay um, let me go back to tweet stats here oh good it's done all right so it went through and it's it's just giving me a lot of information um, you'll notice uh, you know how many tweets I posted per uh, month okay uh, notice I, I was really busy last month wow look at that I mean 502 posts in the month um, when during the day and uh, on what days. So it looks like I tend to tweet more in the morning mm. than I do in the afternoon. Now, just to keep you, I, I work basically from 7 to 4. So this kind of notice, it pretty much just kind of cuts off at 4 o'clock. Um, I don't, you know, I don't tweet a lot on the weekends, but, you know, I, I, I have been known uh, to do so. Um, and then... You know, I seem to tweet mostly on Tuesdays. <laughs> I, I, I'm a giving, lot of this, you're like, oh, huh? Why? Yeah, exactly. Why am I like that? Um, again, here's <laughs> aggregate hourly tweets. So again, you know, notice around lunchtime, it tends to kind of take a little nosedive <laughs> there. And in the evenings, and you know, I don't, for some reason, I guess I tweeted once at four o'clock in the morning. Hmm. I, I don't recall doing <laughs> that, but okay. Um, these are the people who most, uh, or I most reply to. So I send a lot of messages to my friend Laura, a lot of to Karen, uh, uh, Jason Griffey. Um, Fuel Frog is something I mentioned in my previous uh, presentation, which allows me to track uh, my uh, gas usage. Um, and look at that, Krista Burns. Yay, I've sent you 15. Um, and then, you know, what interfaces am I using to post? So notice that Twitter bar, I post most from Twitter bar. Twirl, I don't actually use much anymore, so that will slowly move it down. Um, Twithive.com. Oh, there you Yep, right here. So, so I've posted 350 now. I've only been using Twithive for about a month or two. Right, yeah. So, um, you know, it's, uh, so I can see what software I'm using. And who do I retweet the most often? So, you know, who, who do I follow that I repost their content? So, actually, I, you know, this is, I think this is even more interesting than last time I looked at it. <laughs> they've, they've added some stuff. Yeah, they're always. And, and, it's, and it's very colorful. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I like this so much, I'm going to Twitter about it. I'm going to post a tweet, checking out my tweet. That's okay. So there we go. Um, so actually, we're about uh, five minutes short of our hour. That actually worked out uh, pretty darn well. Um, does anybody have any questions uh, or comments about either anything I covered? Um, oh, and notice um, Kitch Queen here is... Uh, Checking out her, when did when did you join Twitter? So somebody oh, saw that I did that, so they went to check theirs out. It's kind of cool. Um, or Twitter in general. If, if you've got a question, feel free to either. Um, uh, we can, uh, somehow I think we can turn on your mic, but actually I'm not sure anybody has a mic. Let me check the software here. Um, we can unmute you if necessary. Um, or you can just post a question in the Q&A section um, in the GoToWebinar bar. Um, all of these um, URLs that you went to are going to be in um, your delicious... Yep, yeah. I will bring up that URL right now. It's the same URL as the last presentation. Yeah, when I post um, up the recording of this, we'll have a link to this as right. well. Is it, yeah. Um, but it is delicious.com slash travel and librarian slash Twitter. And there is way more stuff in here uh, that there's 252 different bookmarks in here, so way more than I covered. Uh, I'll just quickly mention this tweet from below and tweet from above. Somebody has come up with a system to post to Twitter anonymously. Yeah, um, people are yeah, people are like, oh, I don't know. You know, you gotta own what you say. Yeah. Um, so you know, you might want to do that. Um, so yeah, um, this one here called tweetlater.com. This is actually social oomph. 
Um, they, for some reason, yeah, if, so if, if, yeah, if you, if you click on tweetlater.com, it takes you to social. Are they possibly um, thinking of expanding to other things besides Twitter? <coughs> I believe so. Why. Yeah. I, I think what they've done is they've, they've bought a bunch of different URLs and they all forward into the social service. So, um, the one at the top, there is another one I found, uh, license plate tweets. Uh, this is how you can express your road rage on Twitter by, you know, saying, Hey driver with license plate X, Y, Z, one, two, three. Um, you learn how to use your signal, you idiot. Or I something. That. <laughs> so yeah, and, and then you can follow and read, you know what what they say. Um, so but don't okay. Don't tweet and drive. Yes, yeah. Please pull over, pull over and drive. <laughs> don't don't do that. Um, and yeah, we're trying to click to unmute. Okay, um, Laura, we're seeing you have a question. I have unmuted you. Uh, is do you have a question? Might be from before. No, she did. No, nope. okay. those were actually question marks were up there the last time we looked. So I oh, because we didn't clear them. Okay. Them. Yeah, and uh, Susie, do you have a question? Okay, uh, we'll we'll take that as a no. Um, yeah, we're we're using slightly different software this time. We've been using GoToMeeting. We're now trying to go to Webinar, which will let us host like a thousand people at a time. So tell <laughs> tell all your friends. Um, no longer restricted. Yeah, no longer restricted to 15 people, uh, but the interface is just a little different, so we're, we're still getting the hang of it here, but it seems to be working well for us. And let's see, question came through. Uh, no, this is a lot to take in. I know it is. Um, you know, if, if I, I, uh, Susie, I don't know if you attended um, the one from a couple of weeks ago. I, I really recommend, if you haven't, you, you watch that one first. And, you know, play with Twitter a little bit, get used to just the basic interface, um, the web interface first, get the hang of it, do some searches, follow some people. Follow uh, us. Follow us. Yeah, please. Uh, follow the commission, follow either of us in general, M. Sowers or C.J. Burns. Um, you know, then worry about kind of the stuff we talked about today. I mean, this is, yeah, it is a lot. Um, but this is just kind of to give you a taste of the kind of things that are out there. Mm -hmm. That all these different ways that it's not just get Twitter and that's it. That there's lots of things you can do with it. There's lots of apps being written, lots of things, products, and that other places are coming up with that'll help you use it more efficiently or differently mm -hmm. or better. Um, <clears throat> yep. And in fact, I'll just bring this up. This is a uh, web page of somebody tracking libraries that have Twitter accounts. Um, so if you're looking for, uh, you know, what other libraries are doing. Um, here's a couple hundred of them. I think they just updated, um, I think it said today. Was it just updated time? today? Um, yeah. Updated 9-1, so that, that would be uh, yesterday, actually, close enough. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, f find find a uh, service that is... Um, I think NLC staff has a question. Oh, uh, a what question. questions are you answering? Oh, that's right, you, can't, you guys can't see questions, I apologize. Basically, Susie just said uh, that this is a lot to take in. Um, so that was it. And, uh, Laura had commented earlier that she probably has an F when we were looking at the, the Twitter grades. So, uh, yes, thank you for that reminder, NLC staff. Um, so I'm done. Krista, okay. <laughs> want to do your wrap up? I, I don't see any other questions coming in. Yeah, nobody else has anything else. It's great. Thank you very much. Um, oh, there's, um, oh, Susie said she did participate in the first one. We'll find it helpful to review, definitely. Um, okay. If you are to going to recommend uh, five to a patron who, uh, like me, wants to start getting involved in using Twitter and accompanying resources, what would you suggest? Um, recommend, uh, just to clarify, recommend five people to follow or five services to use? Not, not exactly five what, I guess, is my question. If you could clarify that, I would appreciate it. <clears throat> um, I would recommend you follow me. <laughs> I mean, I, and I'm not being, mainly because I post a lot of interesting stuff I find online that I think librarians would be interested in. So, um, you know, yes, I, I do post um, best, services. Uh, best services for management and or fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I like TwitHive. I mean, I really do. I've, I've, I'm getting the hang of it, and I like the fact that I can access it from anywhere. Now, if you're really pretty much just going to do all your tweeting from your desk and you're not going to use multiple computers, um, TweetDeck is a wonderful piece of software. I just like the, the mobility. Right. It's very similar to Tweet. 
Twit Hive. Twit Hive, but it's an application software you download and install. It'll do the same thing with the columns, mm -hmm. being able to add people to them and all. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the, um, the uh, Twitter feed, um, if you've got content already, uh, whether that be Facebook status updates or blog posts, something like that, I think uh, Twitter feed would be a great service to get that content into your Twitter account. Um, but again, I, I want to stress, you know, I'm, I'm not giving you five. I, I think I'm going to stop there at two because you really want to be comfortable with how Twitter works um, and, and kind of find your voice um, before you do it. You know, create, create an account just for yourself. Follow people like us. Um, you know, follow Nebraska Tourism. I, I, I met the woman who uh, two weeks ago who runs that. You know, there's there's a lot of Nebraska stuff online. I'm working on a blog post about Nebraska stuff on Twitter. <laughs> um, you know, and and just have fun with it before you say, okay, now I'm going to tweet on behalf of the library. Yeah. Here's the library. Practice account. as yourself first. Um, figuring out how it gets how it used, what kind of things are out there that you're interested in, like yeah, Nebraska things, or if you have a certain interest, you can search Twitter for. Um, accounts on certain topics and things, you know, so anyone that has Nebraska in their location or mentions Nebraska, and you can see, you know, okay, all these people, these are these Nebraska ones, maybe I'll follow them, and there's the State Fair Twitters actually has an account. No, oh, okay. Um, yes. <laughs> um, you know, start out with a personal one first before you decide to become your library as its own account, um, and it might be a good way to just um, get started, yeah. That you do have favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll stop. And you'll there. see. You'll probably <laughs> notice if you look through, and this is in my delicious account too. Different services come up and become your new favorite. If you go looking back through someone's delicious links on a topic, you'll see older things they've they've favorited like a year ago, and then a similar service that they favorited a month ago, and now that's the one you're using. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> that's me. You're public. Um, yes, I am. So you may see, you know, how things change over time, and new services come up, and people change what they're using. Um, mm -hmm. You know, everybody. There's always new developers coming out, new people programming things. That um, it's a, it's a very, it's in always in. It's very fluid. Yes. Yes. So. All right then. Cool. All right. I think we should wrap it up. We're here about 11:03 by our clock. Um, thank you very much for attending this week. Um, next week we will have a session that um, we're doing on using Moodle for running online classes that the commission has been doing. So you can join us here next week. Um, sometime in the next day or two, this session will be up um, as a recording, so you can watch that as well. Um, watch and listen to that. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye.